Hi everyone and welcome to another English with Joseph. Well, today I would like to talk to you more about the subject of the voice and pitch and tone. Those of you who know me or who have had lessons with me recently will know that the voice and pitch and tone is one of my favorite topics. Accent reduction and voice work is something which I enjoy very much. Today I would like to give you some advice on talking and how to improve your speaking. Now, you, you probably know that I speak a lot about this shadow method, but another thing I speak about a lot is how you can move your voice up and down when you're speaking. There's two types of two types of pitch and tone methods that you could use. Let me explain. Imagine that I'm reading the news. I'm imparting information to you. Well, I can start on a keynote and I can read it with my voice descending. For example, Firemen say a cat who was stuck in a tree has now been released. Okay, or perhaps a better story might be Two people were killed today in a car accident in the southern part of China. So you can see or you can hear that a definite descent in my voice. I started above my usual vocal range. Two people and then I gradually came down, okay? So if you're imparting information, this is the best way to speak because if you don't speak this way, it sounds like it's a question. For example, two people killed today in China? That's a question because my voice is going up. So if I'm giving you information, it would be two people killed today in a car accident. Okay, that's method number one. You're imparting information and the voice comes down. But we're not all news readers. And if you're imparting information on the telephone or something like that, it's perfect. But what if you're having a normal conversation? Or what if you're giving your opinion to your friend? Well, I recommend that the next time you use the shadow method, you look at some comedy. Because there's all kinds of ways you can say something with fun. For example, what? No not doing that you know and you can hear the voice going up so rather than saying what no I am not doing that it brings a bit of character and life and makes your voice more more lively okay so that's um, that's something um, the second method is where you read the same thing but you can move your voice up and down with every word. And the advantage of doing this is you can just completely take away the spaces but change the pitch and tone so that the word is recognized by the tone rather than being between two spaces. Let me explain. Let me explain. In the first, our first example, two people were killed today in a car accident. Okay, now, I've kind of smoothed over the spaces there anyway, but the spaces are still there. If I was to read, two people were killed today in a car accident, it would be very hard to hear because it's all jammed together. But what if with each word I moved my voice up and down? Two people were killed today in a car accident. It's much easier to hear, and it sounds nicer. Two people were killed today in a car accident. So you're saying the same thing, but you're saying it in a different way. And indeed, many newscasters prefer to speak like this because then they can eliminate the spaces completely and just simply leave you with the words. This is one of the tricks of news reading. So you can hear there, my voice is going up and down with each word, and I can put all the words together. If you've ever watched the BBC One Minute News on the BBC website, I mean, it's dreadful, it's really awful. And the people who do it um, uh, aren't always 
aren't always very good speakers. What I wanted to say there, by the way, was the people who do it are usually Indian, but they're actually British Indians. So they're still British, but they have a different vocal range. They're born in Britain, but they still have a different vocal range. And it's not just you that finds it hard to understand them. I do also. But because of our government's um, uh, our, our government's approach to the idea of openness, anyone can read the news. You can't discriminate because they have bad voices. I'm very in favour of of immigration. I, I those of you who've who've listened to me watching other um, podcasts will know that I'm very in favour of anyone having a fair chance in Britain. But really, when it comes to presenting and speaking, they have to have a nice voice. They don't have to be British necessarily, but they have to have a nice voice. And the people who do the BBC One Minute World News, I don't think have... They're British, but their accents and the way that they speak is terrible. And you can see that if you log on to bbc.co.uk slash news. Um... They try to move their voices up and down, the way I've described, but it's not always successful because they're not clear. They're not clear speakers. But if it's done clearly, you can get a lot of information in very quickly. For example, first the headlines, two people were killed today in a car accident in southern Philippines. I notice they're Philippines, so it holds your attention. You can hear it going up and down, but take away the pitch and tone. Two people were killed today in the southern city of the Philippines. It, you can't catch it. So it's a way of taking away the spaces, but still giving you the words. Now, I say all of this because um, speaking is a very different thing from reading, and there's still people around who seem to think that, yep, I speak well or uh, my speaking has to improve, or whatever else. Um, but uh, really, I, I, I just think that uh, there's a lot more work to be done in educating people. We're living in a time of academia and intellectualism where we feel that we should be able to buy whatever we want. Many students come to me and think that I'm Harry Potter. It's like, I'll just book ten lessons with you and you give me English. It doesn't quite work that way. I'm not giving you anything except tools to help you grow. And then my job is to make sure you use those tools effectively. So I can't do the work for you, but I empower you to help you to do the work. And one way I do that is with speaking. Speaking is a very uh, a very different thing from intellectual listening. Speaking is one of the few things where you actually still have to, one, involve other people, two, practice. You know, it, you can't learn it from a book. You have to simply practice it. So, um, it's one of the few things which is passed on to us. You know, it's an art form. And like any pieces of art, you have to learn it and how to use it. But reading about it simply intellectualizes it. And you need to jump in and actually get things moving. The shadow method is perfect for that. I'm not going to start talking about that again. I've spoken about it enough in other podcasts. But it's just to give you an idea. Okay, so my two points. Giving information. Two people were killed today in a car accident. Or it's maybe a sad story, so maybe I could say two people died today after eating Joseph's cooking. Okay, so it it has a note on the top, and it comes down. All right, so you use the keynote, and I'm sure you've heard the term keynote speech. Think of it like a piece of music. You give it a note above your usual vocal range, and then you come down. To give it more feeling, you could perhaps, you could perhaps um, experiment a bit with that. Maybe if it's something happier. It's often good to look at a story and say, okay, if this was a piece of music, what would it sound like? And that really gives you an idea how you should present it in speech as well. 
And the second part, the second point that I was was talking about a moment ago, the second the second method, um, is that you can go up and down with each word. Two people were killed today after eating Joseph's cooking. So you can take away the spaces completely and put it all together. You can experiment more with this, but um, it doesn't mean talking faster, and it doesn't mean cramming. Every word has its place, but it's how you present it, you know, with the tone going up and down, or with the tone going down, or if it's something sad, with a sad tone. It's all completely comparable to music. If any of you are piano players, pianists, uh, guitar players, guitarists, so the voice is no different. The voice is a wind instrument, you know, and it fits well into an orchestra. Okay, uh, that's all I want to say today. So I'll see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. And remember, all of the links are here in the page to my Amazon books, my italki uh, page. If you want any lessons, you can contact me privately as well. One final thing, remember, I don't get to see the comments that you leave thanks to Daily Motion. Comments are not available, sadly. Um, so if you do have anything you want to tell me or you want to say to me, please write. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>